Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the farmhouse. We are just getting back from vacation. It is taking us a little bit of time to gear back up and get things going. We had such a wonderful vacation. It was so relaxing and the kids had so much fun. But school starts in two weeks, so we have started to transition the kids to new bedtimes, new wake-up times. Um, we're getting ready to go camping again. So we have been working on that and on top of that, just maintaining the garden and all of the monarchs are here. So lots of little things going on, nothing big and exciting. It is supposed to be a little bit cooler today. So I think I'm going to process the rest of the tomatoes that we have. Um, I'm gonna do them in the oven this time and roast them that way and then process them just because it's cooler and we really like them done that way. Um, and then I do want to show you guys the tomatoes because this is going to be our last batch of tomatoes for this year. We are very disappointed and very sad, but the tomatoes just didn't do very well. So um, we're going to rip all of this out here in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's not going to be composted because it has a really bad fungus, but we will get it taken care of. And we're also going to try and catch the animal that keeps jumping the fence and eating my apple trees. So let me show you guys the tomatoes and then we'll go check on the monarchs this morning. Here is the very sad and very pitiful tomatoes. So this is what our tomato plants looked like last year, say in like September, probably not even, it probably was like October when they look like this, but they got a fungus and it just took over. I still have a few like red ones back there in the back that we're just waiting for if they ripen. But for the most part, this is done. Um, I think what we decided is next year, we will take the suckers from the first round of pruning and pot them all and let them grow and then we will replace them. So we'll succession plant basically tomatoes next year is what we're gonna try and do. Something that is running great and doing great is this basil. So I'm probably gonna harvest some of this today as well. And I will put that in the dehydrator. But you can see right here, this is a perfect example. Something is getting into the backyard and it is eating basically anything it can find. Um, so we got a trail cam from my aunt and uncle. We're gonna try and put that up and see what we can get. But sad day at the farmhouse for these tomatoes. When we got home, I moved the caterpillars into the main outside enclosure because we had so many of them. Um, so, I cleaned it out first, but look, there is a juicy one there. There's one there. There's another one right there. There was an egg on this one. I might have come out by now, but, oh, wrong way. Let's go this way. If you look up here, we got three NJs over there. Nothing over there yet but not too shabby and these guys should be going soon as well i think i showed you guys these but check out the sunflowers look at that one it's huge these are doing really good won't use any of these for cut flowers more for just pollinators and fun They are so pretty though. And because I'm out here, I am gonna check the milkweed for any more caterpillars and take them in. Here are the cucumbers. Since we were away, look at that one. I don't really think there's anything <laughs> we can do with that one. There's another one over there. There's one hanging right there. These kind of got out of control. And 
the flowers, on the other hand, they're doing great. Still not too happy with the fact that these are just so small, but for the most part, they're doing fine. We're still getting some pretty ones. Yep. While we were gone, our sourdough starter lived in the fridge. And why, when we got back, I pulled it out, I let it get to room temperature, I discarded it and fed it twice, and now it is ready to make bread again. Sourdough is really, really resilient. It will come back even when you think it is absolutely a goner. My best practice, or what I like to do, is when we are going to be gone, I put it in the fridge, when we get home, pull it out, let it get to room temperature, discard it once or twice, depending on how long it's been in the fridge, and then use it to bake. We are out of bread because we've been gone, so we're gonna make some bread. And Hen is over here in the corner helping me. Another thing that really missed us why we were gone is the hummingbirds. When we got back, they all of the feeders were empty and they were buzzing the windows wanting food. So I'm going to make some more hummingbird food for them today and hopefully they'll calm down a little bit and not be as mad at us. But we are loving seeing all of the hummingbirds visiting our feeders. To make hummingbird food, we make a lot at one time because we have a lot of feeders, but I'm gonna fill a four cup um, measuring thing with four cups of water. I'm going to add one cup of sugar. Hummingbird is a four to one ratio. So if you're only making two cups of hummingbird food, then you only need a half cup. Of sugar but I'm making four so I need an entire cup of sugar. I'm gonna put this in the microwave for five minutes and then I'll take it out and stir it up. Five minutes are up. I'm going to stir this until the sugar is completely dissolved and then I'm gonna let it sit on the counter until it gets to room temperature. Sometimes I like to do this at night and then let it sit on the counter overnight so that first thing in the morning it is, I know it's room temperature. Coming bird food. Do they like sugar? Yes, they do. What happens if you just put sugar in? Before I go and harvest basil, because the basil plants are getting a little bushy and I don't want them to flower, let's go check on the monarchs and see how they're doing, how many chrysalises we have, and how many eggs. I see a juicy one there. There's another one there. Ooh. Oh, look, he, there's one right there. They're doing pretty good. And if we go up, there are two right there that look really healthy. 
one in a J, and then another one right there that also looks really healthy. Pretty excited about this batch. I think it's gonna be a good batch of Monarchs. Here is the basil. I'm gonna basically just chop this completely off pretty close to the base. I don't expect to get that much more growth out of it. So we're just gonna chop this off, dehydrate it all down and we'll have our basil. Probably not enough to last us all winter, but it's enough for now. Something's better than nothing. They don't look so pretty right now, but I'm gonna water them and I think they'll be fine tomorrow. But these are the hydrangeas we started from cuttings a couple weeks ago. Look at how good they're looking. Today, earlier today, when I opened the box, um, they were like touching the top of the box. It was really, really pretty. They are ready to come out. Um, I had to move them from their nice little secure spot because we're getting the siding redone on the house and they just had to move but these are looking great. They'll pop back tomorrow. I know they will. And then this is another box of them. And these are looking awesome too. So super excited about these. I don't know if I showed you guys or not, but we picked our last batch of tomatoes this year. We really did not have a very good tomato year, which sad, but it is what it is. But instead of putting these through the sauce machine, I am going to dice up these tomatoes and roast them in the oven and make like a roasted sauce instead of our regular sauce. So that's what I'm working on now. It is not gonna be grand. If I only get one jar, then what we will most likely do is just put it in the fridge and I will use that for spaghetti sauces. So let's start cutting up some tomatoes. might be a little bit more than I thought. So I'm gonna season these with salt and pepper. I'm gonna put them in the oven at 450 for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then I will take them out and put them in a big um, stock pot so that I can puree them down. If I wasn't planning on canning these, I would add a little bit of oil, but because I think I want to can them, I'm going to skip the oil and just do the salt and pepper and yeah, get them in the oven roasting. Today I got everything started and nothing done. So hummingbird food is cooled and ready to go out That'll go out tomorrow. The two pans of tomatoes are roasted. Um, I will puree them down tomorrow 
and see how much we have. And then the timer just went off. So the two loaves of bread are done. I'll put those on the counter. And my kitchen is a mess. But, oh, and there's more basil that has to be taken care of. But I am exhausted. It's been a long day. So I'm going to call it a quits and I will talk to you guys in the morning.